Hello, my name is Håkon and welcome back to my channel where today I'm going to talk about typewriter layout. Now one thing I like typing on typewriters is poems and quotes. Um, not just my own, um, very often I type other people's uh, poems and quotes. Um, for instance, here I've got a sonnet by Shakespeare uh, that I quite like. Um, and one thing I try to do when I uh, type out poems and quotes is to make sure the text is reasonably centered uh, horizontally and vertically on the page so it looks pleasing. Uh, with quotes, I also, uh, if possible, uh, if it looks nice, I try to do a straight right margin when I can. And uh, you will notice here there are some of these spaces in the text are bigger than a normal space. Um, and that is one of the ways you do that. And also some typewriters have a very nifty feature that isn't that heavily advertised uh, and certainly not well known. And that is half spacing, which means that you can create a space that is precisely half a character width in addition to a full width space. And that allows you to do things like this. And also it, allow, it allows you to center text uh, perfectly as well. And I will show you how to do that later. Um, it doesn't work on all typewriters, but if yours allows you to do that, it uh, opens up a lot of possibilities for more beautiful typewriter layout on paper. So it's a few more here. Again, I have aligned the right margin. Um, to make it straight and a few other ones as well. George Bernard Shaw here, Oscar Wilde. I do have, I have typed a lot of Oscar Wilde because Oscar Wilde, let's be honest, he has some of the best quotes in the world. Here it says, when the gods wish to punish us, they answer our prayers. So please take note, <laughs> that is true. Um, so, um, in fact, uh, Oscar Wilde has so many good quotes that it was Dorothy Parker who famously said uh, that there was no point coming up with new witty things to say because if you did, Oscar Wilde would get credit for it. So, yeah, that's how witty Oscar Wilde was. Uh, and also, by the way, Dorothy Parker, if you like poetry that is really well written, Technically, a uh, perfect meter, perfect rhymes, everything just so. Dorothy Parker, absolutely brilliant. One of my favorite 20th century poets. Um, right, a bit more Oscar Wilde here and more Oscar Wilde and more Oscar Wilde, Oscar Wilde. Uh, we've got uh, Søren Kierkegaard as well, the Danish philosopher. People demand freedom of speech as a compensation for the freedom of thought which they seldom use. And this is unfortunately true. And more Shakespeare. You can't not have Shakespeare. And uh, we are finishing off here with Oscar Wilde as well. So all of these um, quotes and poems that I've got here have been... Um, I've done the layout for them on a computer to make sure that things were lined up. And I've, uh, also for the quotes, I've had to play around a little bit with the width of the text, trying to make it uh, the most pleasing and seeing if there's any line split that allows me to create a nice even right margin. So I will show you how to do that later. So there are a few things you need uh, to uh, do this. Of course, first of all, you will need a typewriter. So this is one of mine. This is uh, what I think is a very underrated typewriter. It is a Brother Deluxe 1510. What else do you need? You need a typewriter, yes. Um, you also, uh, in order to get a very, very precise um, layout for your typewriter on your computer, you will also need a scanner. Uh, you can use a camera, but it requires um, a little care and it's harder to get it precise. Um, and you also need some kind of software that allows you to adjust character sizes with at least one, hopefully two decimal points. Um, if you use something like Word, you will have noticed perhaps that it does half point 
character sizes. So you can set, uh, for instance, type to be 11.5 size or 12 or 12.5, but you can't set anything in between those. And so it's not precise enough to uh, get exact values for laying out uh, text for typing. Um, it is possible to cheat a little bit and compensate for that, um, actually. Uh, and I will show you that too in this video. Because many will only have something like Word um, to use and they will not have something as precise as Adobe Illustrator uh, or similar programs that I use um, to lay out their text. But it may be good enough to use Word and I will show you a little trick uh, how to do that. Okay, so um, the first thing I need to do in order to align my... Uh, uh, create, to create a perfect template uh, on my computer is to type a text that will be my reference text uh, and then I will type the same text on the computer and I will scan the typed document and I will use that scan to adjust the font settings on Illustrator to match perfectly with the text I've got. So I will get back to you once I've done that. Right, so I've typed up a text now on my typewriter. I've done a blank verse version of the to be or not to be soliloquy from Shakespeare, uh, from Hamlet. Um, and I'll scan this on my absolutely ancient Epson scanner. Now, <clears throat> Normally when you scan documents, uh, oh, let's see, it looks like I lost my focus there. Okay. Normally when you scan documents, you put it in the corner because you mainly just want the text that's on it. And normally it doesn't go straight to the edge. Now, in this case, because I'm scanning this because I want to align the text perfectly with the computer, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. So I'm going to leave it a little bit Oh, actually, I'm in the wrong corner now. Um, normally it's here, uh, but I'm going to leave it a little bit. Let's see, I'll just move it. So a little bit inside and like so. And I'm trying to keep it straight, but of course I can straighten it later if I need to adjust that. Um, so I'll do that like that. And also when I close the lid, it may actually move a little bit. So I will do it like this. And then I'll go on my screen now. Uh, this is my scanning software. Start the preview. And you can see now, we can see the whole of the paper. It's a bit hard to see the edges down here, actually. Uh, so I'm going to change the settings in my... scanner now to make sure that I can see the edges like so. Um, we may have to do some adjustments because I do want to be able to see where the edges are. Now there's of course a little trick you can do if you if you don't have a scanner that allows you to adjust much. I'll just show you that. Um, so what I'll do, I'll just use a piece of paper, I'll just mark the corners of my text like so just to make sure that I absolutely can find them easily on the scan so now I'll do it again And now I'll do a new preview because I can't see exactly where the paper has been moved to. All scanner software is a bit different, so yours may not have all these options. Now I can probably go back to document actually for my scan uh, auto adjustment. And I'll make sure there's a little bit of room around it. It doesn't matter so much. All I need to make sure now is that I definitely have the corners inside my scan area. 
Um, I'm going to save this as called. Yeah, that's fine. Um, resolution, I usually use 600 DPI, but it doesn't really matter so much because if you are using any kind of software that allows you to rescale text perfectly, it will also allow you to rescale images perfectly. So um, I'll just leave this as 600 and I'm going to press scan and it should appear on our desktop in a moment. And of course, uh, this being a really old scanner, I think it is from 2003 or 2004. Um, it, isn't as fast as a modern scanner would be. It's uh, USB 2, I think. Maybe it's even USB 1, but it's, yeah, it is quite old. Right, so now I've scanned that and I've got an image now on my desktop that looks like this that I can then import into my uh, software to uh, have a little look at, uh, I can rotate it now as well. So we've got the corners. Um, and got the text and that's all we need and then i'll move into adobe illustrator to keep working after i've cleared my scanner out of the way right so here we are in adobe illustrator for the next leg of our journey into doing digital layouts for typing uh, and i've created a document that is exactly a5 size uh, or an artboard here in illustrator and I've got the text, which is the same that I've just typed on the Brother typewriter with exactly the same line breaks as well. So it's the same number of lines and it's the same line width, because those are the two things we are looking at primarily now, first of all. And then I need to open the scanned file, which I've got here. I'll just drag that into my Adobe document like so. Um, some uh, illustrator programs, illustration programs, you may have to uh, go to the file menu and select import if you want to get a uh, picture into it. Um, others you just drag and drop like you can in Illustrator. Uh, and then I'll see if it lines up, which it should reasonably well, not perfectly necessarily, it does reasonably well. Um, one thing that Illustrator does and that many other proper design programs also do is if you have scanned the picture, uh, the resolution it scanned at is part of the image data. So it will render it the same size on the screen that it is in the original um, based on the DPI, the dots per inch of the scan. Now, if you don't have a scanner, I should mention this too, uh, and all you have to get your text into your computer is a camera. Um, if you have a normal camera, you want to use as tele a lens as possible to take a picture of your uh, typed text. Make sure the typed text is straight and uh, that you can see the corners and uh, a tele lens will give you less distortion. Uh, and you also must try, of course, to keep the camera parallel with the paper. Um, if all you've got is a mobile phone, which is of course very common these days, um, they make very good snapshot cameras, um, you want to make sure that the paper isn't too close to the camera because the closer it is, the more distorted it will be. Um, so I think something like putting the paper on the floor and standing over it is a good way to do it because it makes it easy for you to see that the uh, paper is parallel with the camera and also it's a good distance that should be enough to avoid the worst distortions and make it easier to line things up later. If you've taken a photo, of course, you need to uh, resize it a little bit probably to make it fit with an A5 document inside your Illustrator program, uh, your design program, and um, so that's a little bit more work, but it's not necessarily that hard to do. Um, so I could actually demonstrate that too, if you give me a moment. Right, so now I've taken a picture with my mobile phone. I put the paper on the floor, so it's easy for me to see that I'm uh, relatively straight over it. And I'll just drag that now into Adobe Illustrator, you can see it is very big now. Um, 
I'll just zoom out a little bit. I could have done all the sort of modifications before moving it in here. Oops, I don't want to change the size of it. Uh, I actually don't, I don't want to change the, make sure I don't change the dimensions of it like so. Um, you want to do the corners and hold down shift actually in this illustrator that locks the aspect ratio so you get a more precise scaling. Let's see, so I'm going to move and zoom in a little bit. You can see it is not too bad. The paper is a little bit curled and also a little bit askew. I need to rotate it a little bit like so. And let's scale it down just a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's not it's not perfect, but it is. I think it would do the trick. Um, just to see what this looks like now, I'm going to do the opacity. Um, so now they are on top of each other, and as you can see, that is not too bad actually it lines up rather well with the scan um, so as long the main thing is really to to make sure that you um, it's not it's not perfect but it's probably close enough that you can get a good uh, alignment out of it not ideal not ideal okay I'll remove that um, so now we got the scan again and I'll just move this to the back uh, arranged sent to back and now we've got the text in front here and as you can see it is a little bit too small to start with um, the text I'm using is Courier New and that is one of those standard typewriter fonts based on the IBM uh, type slugs they used on their electronic typewriters um, um, which means it doesn't look like a typewriter font because it is based on the design of the letters rather than on something that has been typed. But it's uh, I found it's quite a good one for uh, doing a layout. Um, right. Ideally, of course, I would want a font that is made from the typewriter itself that I am you doing the layout for. But I, of course, that means I would have to make them myself. Uh, I'll do that someday, maybe. Anyway, um, right, well, let's get this the right size. If we go into character now on Illustrator, there should be something similar in other design programs. Um, first of all, I'll start with the line spacing here. And one thing that is, uh, I do know, is that the standard line spacing of typewriter text on most typewriters is six lines per inch. Um, which is a standard distance that is really, really common. Uh, and that is actually what in uh, good old typesetting terms is known as 12 point. Um, that's so I could change the leading here to 12 points. It's not leading. Some people think it's leading, but it's leading because it's from typesetting times when you added extra lead to your characters to increase the space between lines. Uh, I can see it uh, needs a little bit of rotation, perhaps the text behind here, but it is close enough, I think. Uh, maybe I'll rotate it just a tiny, tiny bit. Also, it looks like this is actually quite common on typewriters as some of the Initial letters are slightly misaligned, and this is something that happens quite easily on lots of typewriters. The T, the capital T's there, are different. So there's one T there, and one T there, and one T there, and their alignment is all a little bit different to each other. Um, so I would just ignore those, really. Um, so 12, as you can see, is pretty good as a line spacing, and I don't need to do any more adjustments. I do see that the lines in the middle here are actually a little bit different, but uh, the bottom one isn't. So I'll just have to uh, presume now I will get a bit of variability anyway, and it will probably look nice anyway. So uh, not too much to worry about. Now, it's the width is also crucial because I don't want it to be off by more than maybe half a character at most. 
in order to get a good center alignment. Um, so uh, 10 points is what I've set it to now, and that's a little bit too big. So I'll try with nine points, and you see that is way too little. Uh, so that means I can go to something like 9.5, still quite a way to go, 9.9 .9 perhaps, and that is pretty close actually. Um, I think that actually would be close enough to work. Uh, I can still do a little bit better maybe with 9.92, and that looks spot on actually. So 9.92 point is the correct font size I want to use for this typewriter and the line spacing, uh, the leading is 12 points. So those are the important numbers. Um, if I want to do one and a half line spacing, I would change the leading to one and a half times the baseline. So that's 18. Uh, and likewise, if I want to do double spacing, I would do 24 point uh, leading. But at the moment I am on single spacing. So that is 12. So now I've got actually a um, the right settings for my brother 1510 deluxe actually it's deluxe brother deluxe 1510 is what it's called. Uh, so that is font size. I'll just type these things usually in my documents and letting 12. Um, so those are the details I need to have for later when I want to recreate text for uh, or to, to work with the layout of the text for the Brother Deluxe 1510. Um, even if you have the same typewriter now, you might get slightly different numbers. So uh, it's always worth checking if you want it to be precise. Right, so how do we lay out text? Now this is, uh, don't think this is a good example actually because it's quite long. So I will do one of the ones that I've already got here. Uh, let's see, I'll just remove this text box now. Uh, and just a little trick here now because uh, lots of people when they add text to a document in a design program, they choose the text tool, the type tool, and they click on the screen like so and then they start uh, typing. So for instance, this um, Oscar Wilde quote, after the first glass, you see things as you wish uh, they were. Oh, let's do it as one go after the second. Uh, you see things. And of course, what you get now is a really long line of text because you haven't defined a text area. If you just click with the type tool anywhere on the text on the screen, you get just a text that is open-ended. Uh, what you want to do when you're working with layouts is to define a text box. So I'm going to click on the type tool and I'm going to hold down the mouse button and that creates a box. And the text you type, I get the lorem ipsum there, will be within that box. So I'll try again. After the first glass, you see things as you wish they were. After the second, you see things as they are not. Finally, you see things as they really are. And that is the most horrible thing in the world. Full stop. And that is uh, Oscar Wilde. Um, so how do we align this text to make it pleasing? Um, so if we try to, I'll just make the text box a bit smaller now. Um, at the moment, these uh, ends don't line up sort of super well. Um, so we do like this. Also, I usually like having, I don't want, if I can avoid it, I also like avoiding dangling these and things like that, or A's at the end of a line, because they sort of belong very strongly with the word that follows. Actually, this looks rather good, because now uh, you can see it's very close to being an even uh, edge over here. And I did mention before about the half spacing. 
Um, and this is a good place if your typewriter allows it to introduce house spacing. If you don't have house spacing, this will actually look rather good. But if you do have house spacing, this is the time to use it. So I'm going to go into my text tool. And after the full stop here, I want to create a space now that is one and a half characters long. Uh, just to indicate this, I'm going to use an asterisk. And I'm going to change the font size now to one and a half times the current size. So now it's 9.92. And if you set that up to, uh, actually I don't have to do it precisely now, but 9.92 times 1.5 is 14.88. So if I do 14.88 like so, um, Actually, now it pushed the line down a little bit, but that is not enough that it will be a problem. Um, I'll just change the color of that too, just so it's clear that that is not part of the text, but just to indicate a one and a half line spacing. Um, I need more of them as well to line things up. I'll need another one here after the comma. Uh, usually in terms of priority, I would put them first after the commas and full stops. And after that, I would try to put them in places where they are the least intrusive. Um, make you see things as you wish they were, for instance. So uh, before and after things as well. Um, might work. Um, and then the second line here also needs uh, some half spacing here. So I'll put one at finally and another one at there perhaps. Was that too much in one place? Yeah, yeah something like that. Um, so now I've got these half or extra one and a half spaces really uh, in these uh, points with the asterisks and you can see it now lines up. You may have noticed I left the full stop outside of the line here and that is on purpose because a full stop uh, doesn't look like it is part of the line. It looks actually better if the full stop, uh, full stops and commas are left outside of the right line here. If on the other hand you have things like uh, uh, exclamation points, um, question marks, also sometimes commas and semicolons, uh, they carry a little bit more visual weight and so they might look better if they are inside the uh, line, whereas a comma and a full stop looks better outside of it. Um, so this is looking quite good for a three-liner. Um, I'm just going to put this over here. Uh, like so. So I got my. That looks a bit strange. Is this the right? Uh, I'll just do like that to make sure it is lined up, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So uh, Oscar Wilde uh, aligned on the right. So now, how do we align this text with the paper? First of all, I'm going to make this um, text box as small as it can without losing any of the text inside it. Uh, of course, uh, Illustrator shows it quite well when it goes outside of bounds. So I'm going to do like so. And also, because I want to align it centrally, I'm going to remove the full stop for now. And I'll put it back in again after aligning the text. So I'm going to do like uh, so. Just make sure the there we are. And then I'll align this to artboard and center and center like so, and then I'm going to increase the size of the text box again so I can put back in the full stop. And of course, making sure I don't center it again now because now the text is visually centered uh, horizontally, but vertically, as you can see, it looks a little bit bottom heavy. And that is because there's an optical illusion uh, now that means that it always looks better centered or more balanced if you move it a little bit above the center of the page. So I'm going to move it up a few notches until it looks nice like that. And that is my text laid out on an A5 sheet of paper. Now there are a few things that I can do now to 
transfer this text to my typewriter, um, I can print it out in make sure that the printer is set to 100% correct size, or I can put my paper on top of the screen uh, as long as I can make sure that the size of the image on the screen is correct. Uh, I'll just show you now, I'll just have to start my webcam. So if you just wait, uh, give me a, a few moments. Right, so here we are with my screen. And this is, as you can see, this is a an A5 sheet of paper and I can change the zoom of this uh, screen now if I do 100% you can see that is a little bit too small I do 110 that is close but it's a bit too big uh, 108 is probably close enough so what I do is I transfer it to my paper by lining up the paper with the layout and making a little mark under the first letter of the text like so. So making a little, just a little pencil mark that I can erase if I want to. Uh, if you want to do this on your screen, you would of course have to find the right setting for your screen. 108 works with mine. It may be something else on yours. It may be something else in different programs. Right, so here we are on my desk with my typewriter and I've also got my uh, paper now ready with the mark uh, showing me where I'm supposed to start. I've got an extra sheet of paper to pad it with. Um, this platen isn't very hard but if you have a hard platen uh, any extra paper you can use for padding is actually quite a good idea. Uh, it will prevent the platen from getting damaged and also it will uh, prevent uh, some of the characters from punching through the paper as well uh, which can happen sometimes especially with things like full stops so uh, let's see I've got the mark now over here uh, and that's probably a good alignment there it's a little bit higher now than exactly on on the line as you can see but that's fine um, so I'm going to move it over to I need to move my margin just a little bit so it's about there yeah that is good enough I'm not going to well I suppose normally I would also make sure my paper was perfectly aligned now and I'm not askew I'm not going to bother doing that right now it looks good actually Oops, sorry, bumping into my camera there. Um, so basically I can now start typing. On my screen I've got my layout so I can see what I'm typing. Um, let's see if you can follow what I'm doing now with regards to the half spacing. So um, as I told you earlier, actually I didn't actually show you that, did I? Um, the way to half space on a typewriter that allows it is that when you push down the space, you can see it now moved a little bit, uh, the carriage, and I release it and it moves the same length again. It moves half a space as you push down and another half space as you lift up. And that is something we can use to our advantage. So um, I'll show you in a few seconds because there will be a lot of half spacing here. So um, after the, the first glass, comma and that's where we get our first half spacing coming up so um, first of all we're supposed to have one normal space normally that's it but this is supposed to be an extra half space long so that means that the next character I will type it when spacebar is pushed down and I will have to keep the next character pushed written with a spacebar pushed down until the next space that is an extra half space long so spacebar down y release and then spacebar down o release spacebar down u release and then it's the space and spacebar down again s c and now this is where we 
get a another one and a half space. So I release it now and I do one space. And at the moment we are at one and a half space ahead, but I'm doing OBR two spaces because now we're not typing when the space bar is down again, we're doing it so and adding another half space there. So now we are back in normal alignment things. And now we're adding another one and a half space. So first one space, then space bar down, A as you wish say Oops, see, I forgot to put a half space for the full stop there. We'll, we'll live. After, first word, another one and a half space there. The second, comma. You see things as oh, they are not full stop. And then it's one and a half spaces. One space, space bar down, shift down, F finally, comma. You see things as they really are. Comma, and that is the most horrible thing in the world. Full stop. Uh, and now we're doing the uh, Oscar Wilde, of course, his name at the bottom, and I'm putting it to the right. So I'll just uh, look at my uh, template, my layout now, and I can see the dash is right under the space between thing and in. So I'm going down there, one, two, three, four. And I'm going to put Oscar Wild. And that is the text uh, aligned perfectly. And this would have looked better in with other configurations, of course, but I'll just to make an example now, uh, of course, First things first, I would have tried to make it four lines instead of three for better balance. And also I would have uh, done one and a half line spacing, but uh, this is just to show you the principle of it. So you can see the one and a half spaces here. Uh, that one got a bit squashed, the full stop there, but it doesn't matter because it was a full stop. Um, actually, it just adds a bit of character, I think. Um, you may have noticed that I do not use double spaces after full stop and single spaces after comma. And that is because I think that is a really bad habit uh, for typing something that is meant to be looked at because it doesn't look nice at all. It is a uh, practice that is back from the day when typewritten things were meant to be drafts. So if you want something to be a draft for something, and where it was supposed to be really, really clear where a sentence stops and begins, uh, then adding two stops after a full stop does make sense. Uh, you want uh, one space after comma, two spaces after full stop and double line spacing. That's what you want for a proper draft of a book, for instance. But if you want something that looks nice and pleasing to the eye, on the other hand, the typographical rules dictate that you should not use a double space after a full stop because that looks absolutely horrible in my opinion and uh, yes it's poor design uh, simply so uh, fixed width fonts to start with aren't the most pleasing to the eye but you're making it worse by adding double spaces after full stops um, so yeah um, so now we can see the space there looks a little bit big because this is now technically two spaces after the full stop. It would have looked better if the full stop was a little bit further that way, which is what it was supposed to be uh, in our layout. Right, so that's how you can do that. Um, if you have any questions about how to do the half spacing and things, then please let me know. Um, 
it's um, yeah you get into the rhythm of it quite quickly as you can see I haven't done it in a while and it's still it was quite easy to do even with the longer stretch here with as you wish they were which is all on the half space um, so yeah Right, um, what else what did I want to show you today? I did want to have a little look at Word and see if I could use that uh, for the layout as well and without being too far off how it is supposed to look. So I'll show you that on my computer in a moment. Right, so here we are in Microsoft Word and I've got the same text that I've been working on in Illustrator or on my typewriter with the same line breaks and I've made manual line breaks. So let's show you now uh, just to make sure the text looks exactly the same. Uh, and the way you do manual line breaks in, um, in Word without making a paragraph is to press Shift and Enter. Uh, a paragraph is not the same as a line break. Um, but because I want to adjust lines exactly now, uh, it's very important that in your paragraph settings, you set distance before and after to zero points, uh, because otherwise it will not be exact to what the typewriter is. Uh, and once you start adding paragraphs in here, it will mess up your alignment completely. If you don't use paragraphs at all and only use hard line breaks, uh, like uh, instead of using a paragraph here, you do, so I remove the paragraph and I do shift enter, shift enter. That will be precise always, but if you use a paragraph, paragraph, uh, now that's going to be the wrong size unless you've sorted that out. So really when you're doing layouts for typing you really should get into the habit of not using paragraphs but instead using uh, line breaks to make sure that your uh, spacing is always going to be exact okay i'm going to remove the viewing of the special characters there so uh, at the moment we have set this uh, this is an a5 sheet of paper so set size to a5 um, and if I'm holding up the A5 sheet, now you can see that's a little bit smaller than the size of the text there. Uh, that's no matter really. The thing is with Word, as I said before, you can only set font sizes in half points. So you can set it to 10 or 9.5 or 10.5, but not exact sizes. But you can set the zoom of the view to be uh, precise within one percentile and you can set the height of the text to be precise within, within one decimal point of with one decimal point of precision and that is enough to get a really good uh, view of the size as well this is a little bit trickier than doing it in illustrator but it is possible and i'll show you how to do it now so first of all let's have a little look at the text we want to try to match the um, width first of all and the tools we have at our disposal for adjusting the width is font size and zoom so those two things so first of all starting with font size we can see that the text here is a little bit smaller than what we have on the screen so we want to reduce the font size to nine point oh, I have to select the text first uh, reduce the font size to 9.5 uh, see how that works okay uh, that is pretty good but not exact so see now the text is a little bit bigger than the, or the text on the screen is a little bit smaller than the text on the page. Uh, so now I have to increase the zoom. So I'm going to go up to 101% and see how that looks. And that is still a little bit too small on the screen. So I'm going to go up to 102%. Uh, and Let's see, so there we are, 102. That is looking actually almost spot on. So I'm gonna keep 102. So that gives us a correct width. Uh, of course, now it's not going to be correct width to the paper. So when we do our layout marks on the paper, what we have to do is make sure that we center the paper ourselves to the page. So if you line it up centrally on the page on the screen, you want to make sure that you also line the paper centrally on the screen when you make your marks for where you are starting to type. Uh, now the second thing we need to adjust is the height and at the moment you can see it is a little bit short. So I go into paragraph settings 
and line distance is now set to single and I'm going to set it to exact and at the, then it's default to 12 points there. Let's start with that uh, and see how that works. So now we are at 12 points and you see that's a little bit too big. Uh, and then I'm going to go in again and change it to 11.8 maybe. And then it is looking a little bit too big still on the screen. And so I'm going to 11.7. And that is starting to look really good. Maybe it's a little bit too big still. Let's see how it looks with 11.6. Um, I think that is going to be, uh, maybe I'll try 11.5 as well, actually, to see if that works better. I think I can't, I'm not sure if it actually registers the 0.55, actually it does. So it means you actually get two decimal points of precision for your line distance, which means you can tune it in perfectly, actually. Uh, and that I think is, is that maybe a little bit too and that's that's perfect actually I think that'll do so right now the text underneath here is lined up perfectly with the text size on the typewriter so now the only thing left to do is to try to make sure you get the text lined up the way you want on the page uh, and of course you don't have as many tools at your disposal for doing this as well as you do on the, um, in the Illustrator. Um, it's not as easy to line up perfectly centrally. Uh, I can, I'll just usually do it by eye actually uh, when I do this. Um, and then I want it a little bit further down, maybe like so. Uh, so if I were to write this text on a typewriter now, I would take my sheet of paper, put it on top here and make it central like so. And then I would make my mark here showing where to start. And that would line up exactly the same way as it does on the screen. And that's how you do it in Word. So uh, a little bit trickier perhaps. And also you'd have to work a bit harder with setting up your line spacings now, so there is a text box function in Word as well, but I can't see it right here. So I'm not sure where I have to find it now because I've changed my layout to only include the things that I use on a regular basis. Um, of course, the principle is the same if you add a table with one cell. So I can do like that and then when I adjust the cell width, you actually your text adjusts with it. And that's one of the ways you can use to, um, to um, find out what layout works the best with your text. So you can use a text box or a, um, a table cell. Uh, of course, it's a absolute, an absolute nightmare to work with table cells and text boxes in Word. Uh, it's a lot easier in designer programs like Illustrator or Inkscape or other programs like that. So that is how you can use Word to also lay out your text for your typewriter. Right, so I hope you enjoyed watching this uh, little tutorial on how to lay out text for typewriting on your computer. Um, if you found this useful, please uh, like, share, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions also, please leave them in the comments, of course. Um, join me on Patreon if you want to support my channel. And thank you very much for watching and goodbye for now. Bye-bye.